Hey, welcome back. My name is Mark with MotionBolt.com, the best place to find royalty-free motion backgrounds on the internet. All right, so I know it's been a while since we've met here. It's been one, two, three, three months or so. I think the last video we did was back in February 28th when it was freezing cold up here. Snow was literally coming down outside. I'm in my attic, so it was unbelievably chilly. Uh, thankfully, it is now summertime, so I don't know why I wasted all the good months of perfectly cool air up here. However, it is July 2nd, very hot up here. And so what I'd like to do is get straight to the point here. I've got a lot of new content on here, and we've got a new plugin, which we might get to here in just a little bit. So first of all, let's take a look at what's new on the website. Under Naturescapes here, this is a brand new segment, which I've just recently added. We've got 4K scapes uh, through, called Through the Trees. There are four escapes here. I've got a cityscape, and I've got a tropical beach landscape here. This is all aerial footage that has been edited together beautifully. It's got high resolution images in there with peaceful, relaxing music. So if you've come to the end of a long, hard day, you wanna throw something up on the TV, you've got friends coming over and you just want something scenic to look at, feel free to check these out. They're about 11, uh, eight to 10 minutes long. Perfect range for just enjoying some nice peaceful scenery here. How I recommend it. I'm gonna be adding a lot more of these. I've got a lot more footage here. Um, so I'm really excited about adding those here. Feel free to check those out. I've got a new playlist with those on YouTube. So feel free to subscribe to that playlist there. Also, let's go ahead and jump over to scenic here. One of the ones I recently added here was called Magical Lake here. This is a pretty cool background here. This took a still image here and I added some golden fireflies kind of flying around, colored the water blue and in the sky a bit of orange to give that fire and ice type dynamic. The water actually wasn't there. So if you take a look at the packs and then go under River of Winter, now I went ahead and downloaded this pack here. One of those backgrounds in here is a lot of water right there, that one there. Took that background, overlaid it, and then that's how you get the water in there. So it's not always creating a new background. It's sometimes taking multiple backgrounds, infusing them together to create a new background. So that's how that one was done recently. All right, so let's take a look at one of the new backgrounds we recently added. This background here, it's under Boca. It's called To The Center. And this was created using a brand new plugin called Stardust from aescripts.com. Now, should we take a look at Stardust here? That is the million dollar question because I can't get instant feedback. So, you know what? We're gonna leave that decision up to my color wheel here. On the color wheel, I have a bunch of yes and no's. If it says yes, then we'll dive right into After Effects and take a look at Stardust. If it says no, we'll save that for a future tutorial. Let's see what it says. Oh, it says yes. Looks like we're jumping into Stardust. So there we go. We just created the gradient background. So let's go ahead and take a look at Stardust. Let's go to new solid and we'll name this Stardust. And let's go to effects, super luminal and Stardust. As you notice, when we apply the plugin to a new layer, it looks very similar to trap code particular. One of the major differences is that it comes the new window on the left side here. Obviously on the far left side, you have all the main options that look very similar to trap code. Now I've installed this little Stardust window here, which gives you just a visual representation of how the plugin is manipulating the particles. It's what they call nodes and modules. So you can add the modules and you can connect these nodes down here. So right now I have two little nodes. I have emitter and particle. And once you select one of those, you can immediately see the options highlighted by that green bar on the left side. I gotta say trap code in particular, I watched tutorials for months, figuring out how the auxiliary particle systems worked, how all the gravity worked, very complicated. However, I'm not a master at Stardust by any means. However, just within the last couple weeks, I've been able to figure out very easily how these different elements relate to each other based upon this visual diagram that these nodes give you. I think that is one of the major advantages to Stardust. It has lots of cool presets here, which we're not gonna jump in too much, but let's just take a look at some of the backgrounds here. Uh, let's take a look at maybe replication lines, replica lines. Now this looks like something that would be extremely hard to build in Trap Code Particular. I honestly have no idea how this plugin does this. Now in Trap Code Particular, we'd have no idea. We'd be like, uh, I have no idea how that preset is made. However, 
in Stardust, let's go ahead and diagram exactly what are the elements that are making these spinny circles here. Let's go ahead and select our layer here, Stardust, and then let's go ahead and bring up this window. Whoa, lo and behold, here's all the elements right here. Let's see if we can move these over a little bit. Alright, so let's just take a quick look at here. We've got two emitters that are attached to particle systems here. Each emitter has its own particle system. Both of those are linked to one transform mode, which rotates on its z-axis, and then it's replicated, and then it's transformed again. Now, if you take away the replication, it disappears, and you just have a straight line of particles here, which you probably can't see that, but there's just a thin line of particles there. That's what's being replicated multiple times. I'm guessing if we were to take that replica and it's set to 33, let's set it down to say 10. Let's see how that changes the scene here. Okay, so it reduced a bunch. Now we're down to like half circles. So I would assume that based upon that algorithm, if we were to take that and set it to five, the circle almost disappears. So likewise, let's set it to say 50 and see if we get a complete circle. Yeah, a little more complete. That's pretty cool looking. Wow, we got some really big circles coming up here. That's cool, so the scene really expands nicely. That already looks kind of cool. You could render that out, blend in the colors. I'm not so sure about the white and dark brown on yellow. Looks kind of cool though, but you could really do a screen grab of that. Possibly add some depth of field, so perhaps you would do like a new, new adjustment layer here. We'll call this, uh, maybe blur, and then we'd add effects, blur sharpen, let's do like a Gaussian blur, make it about a 30, repeat, and then just do like a nice little mask, and possibly, um, I don't know, just in the middle here, okay, that looks pretty good, change it to subtract, scroll down the mask layers and then feather that out just a little bit. So I mean you could do something like that, that looks kind of cool just to kind of bring more focus in on one of the different areas of that background. And the other thing you might do, if we were gonna make this an actual background here, I might just blend the mode into the yellow. I actually think that looks slightly better. So as we're playing this back, I don't know, looks kind of cool. Let's go ahead and bring it to full here. That replicator just makes a big difference. It's one of the things that trap code doesn't have as a replicator. You have to duplicate the, the particle systems multiple times in order to get basically what we just did here. So that's one of the key advantages there. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate your time. I've got a lot of new content that's gonna be coming out very soon. I've got the new plugin, we've got the new Naturescapes, we've got scenic material that's coming out. The Stardust plugin's gonna create some really cool abstract and bokeh backgrounds, which I'm really pumped about as soon as I get some more time to do it. If you wanna check us out, um, subscribe to us on YouTube and subscribe so that way you get the latest updates get all this playlist for the new uh, nature scapes and check us out on facebook as well thank you for watching this is motionbolt.com